Max Holloway versus Justin Gaethje had so much great techers, but it also had that nutty ending for the the casual just bleed guy in all of us. This one was was largely pure techers, and it was great fun. But very early on, Charles Oliveira gets the uh, get, catches uh, Zarukin coming in low, catches the guillotine. Really weird thing because I'm like, he must have done this on purpose, but I've not seen really anyone do it. If you go back and watch that guillotine, Armin Sarukin's trying to fight off the hands, and there is a hand just floating in front of his face. And you're going, whose hand is that? And you realize it's Charles Oliveira's. Because where you normally grab the guillotine, and the hand that's around the neck, you grab that with your other hand, and you pull it up into the neck, or you squeeze it up into the neck. You have your choking hand and a supporting hand. In this choke, Charles Oliveira wrapped with his choking hand, and then grabbed his other arm with his choking hand, so his support hand was just sort of hanging, and he was holding onto his forearm with the choking hand, which was very interesting. Because, you know, I've seen him finish lots of different chokes. His guillotine, he tends to do sort of an old-school Luta Livre style, where rather than trying to get the edge of the bone, so, like, look at your wrist and the thumb side of it, the inside, that sharp bit is what a lot of people try and get into the throat. He does an S-grip, which is where you curl your fingers into each other, and that puts the the part that your watch is on, the face of your watch, into their throat. So you've got a wider thing going into their throat. So it's not you know, if you're if you're worried about like pressure and surface area, you don't have as much of a choke. But it's really good if you've got messed up wrists. But this one, I've I've never seen anyone attempt a choke like this. Yeah, it was really interesting because it looked fairly tight, and Armin Sarukian was reaching for the choking hand and getting the hand that was just sort of hanging there and going, "What on earth is this?" But Sarukin fought his way out. Hedda Gracie said it was because his, his shorts kept falling down and that stopped Oliveira from finishing it. There was a close uh, triangle arm bar. Was that near the end of the second round? I don't know. It's, it was close, but I think because he'd heard the clapper, Armin Sarukin was not tremendously worried about it. Um, but in those sort of situations, yeah, and Charles Oliveira did try this, you might as well just try and break their arm because if you can pop their elbow and then you're in round three and you're striking a guy who's got an arm that's only sort of working. That's always good. The thing that I loved about Charles Oliveira's guard in this one, he was looking for overhooks a lot. A lot of the time he looks for, uh, he gets a hand inside the thigh and starts throwing up arm bars and things like that. But Armin Sarukin, if you saw him against Joel Alvarez, he is a monster on top. He stays low and he hits with elbows very well in a short space. And Charles Oliveira was going for overhooks. Now, an underhook is where your arm goes underneath the opponent's arm and you get, like, your shoulder underneath their armpit. And, and that's great for coming up. So, like, on a single leg from half guard or using butterfly hooks to, to build up. Overhooks you see more... Well, think of the standing clinch. In wrestling, people are trying to get underhooks. Overhooks you see more in boxing because people wrap over the arm. You go over their arm and you, uh, you pinch it under your armpit, basically. And in boxing, you bring your glove in between your chest and your opponents, and that ties up the arm and makes it very hard for them to hit you. So boxing, you see tons of double overhooks, which you don't see in wrestling because it's not really a very good position because you're giving the other guy double underhooks. But Olivero is grabbing overhooks and double overhooks from the, guard, from the guard to stop Sarukian elbowing. And then Sarukian pulls one elbow free, folds it over and elbows Charles Olivero in the face, but his hand is still in the middle of Charles Olivero's chest. And Charles Oliveira grabs it like he's doing the hand-on-heart Roman Empire or, or an American National Anthem thing. Uh, and he grabs the wrist that way. And then he gets his other hand, and then he's got the overhook on the other side too. So he brings his hands across and locks them together. And then he gets his feet in and butterfly sweeps from there, and he's able to get back up to his feet. And it's a really cool control that I've never really seen. Pinning the guy's wrist to your chest like that with the hand-on-heart grip. Uh, and it only worked because Sarukin had freed his arm just enough to land the elbow. But that's something I'm stealing and trying. There was another one later on where he was in half guard and Sarukin had hit him with a good elbow that cut him open. And you could see that Charles was like, I don't want to get hit again for a minute. Oliveira reaches around Sarukin's cross-facing arm, which is the one we're always saying keep off, left hand under, right hand over, and he locks his hands in what's sometimes called like a, a vice grip or a bolt cutter. And he just clamps them down over Sarukin's uh, bicep and pulls his head into Sarukin's peck and I'm looking at it going that's got to be really annoying because you can't really like punch across in front of your own peck with your free hand and you know if you wanted to you could probably squeeze up on that arm and make it hurt it's not going to finish any fights but I'm stealing that to try and grappling 
couple of cool striking moments. Uh, Sarukin, obviously very famous for his left kick, loves his one-two step up left kick. And Oliveira very early on times a right kick to the standing leg as Sarukin steps up for the left kick, gets the cut kick and knocks Sarukin to the ground. And as we talked about in, uh, you know, in high level fights, wrestling Sarukin to the floor is hard work. You watch Matuj Gamrot fail that for five rounds. Timing a kick on his standing leg gives you a free knockdown. And if you stand, you, if you uh, pressure in on top of him, you've got a great chance of holding him down or at least making him work to get up. Cut kicks are unbelievably money in MMA and you barely ever see them. And then Tarukin did a nice thing where he threw a, a combination with his hands. I think it was left, straight, right, uppercut. And then he pushed Charles Oliveira's forehead with his left hand and stepped up into the body kick with his left leg. I thought that was gorgeous. That's what, this is the thing. We're always moaning about the gloves. We're always moaning about the eye pokes. Eye pokes are really annoying. The two that Max Holloway put in in the fight with Gaethje, you know, that is enough to change a fight. They should have taken a point from him at that point. doesn't matter if it's uh, intentional or not, if your fingers are going in the guy's eyes. But I always want fighters to be able to push off the face because it is, there are some really cool things you can do with it. So it's a tricky spot. We need gloves that, like, encourage the hand to curl and then that doesn't stop eye pokes, but it removes deniability. So you can say you, you had to ha you you had to make effort to straighten your fingers out towards the opponent's eyes there, and you start docking points all the time. But that involves the UFC making a glove that actually does that, and the new glove that they're advertising doesn't have a word about like encouraging a, the the fist to be pulled or the shape of the glove encouraging a fist. And you'd also have to have the refs on board, and they just won't. They're like, if you do that again, you're getting a hard warning. And then there was the super dope axe kick from uh, Armin Sarukian, which, as close to a combat effective axe kick as I've seen since Andy Hook died, uh, we, we say it every time, but there's one man who's ever effectively used the axe kick, and it was Andy Hook. And the secret to that was that like, he deadlifted, had these enormous hamstrings, uh, so that he didn't get injured. There's such a difference between Andy Hook's axe kick and like, the taekwondo axe kick where you land with the flat of the foot, and it's just like brushing the opponent's face. And if you actually hit their shoulder, you'd hyperextend your own knee because you've got little twiggy legs. Um, you know, you need horse thighs and you need uh, like a lifetime of that weird cushion sparring that gives you incredible leg dexterity and flexibility. And we're never going to see it again. We're never seeing another fighter like Andy Hook. If, you've, if you are new to this podcast because it's UFC 300 and you're a combat sports noob, look up Andy Hook right now because you've got a new favourite fighter. A-N-D-Y. Hug like you would give someone.